For those of you who watched the video of my previous haul out, the haul out just before my voyage around the Atlantic, you'll recall that I constructed a handle that inserted into the daggerboard trunk of the Fatty Knees dinghy, uh, in which would give me an extra handhold while working up on the foredeck. And that worked quite well. I used that handle often whenever I was working there. Nonetheless, I still felt quite insecure working up on the foredeck. There were still just not a lot of things to hold on to on a part of the boat that has so much motion. So I decided I'll try adding another pair of lifeline stanchions. I purchased the stanchion bases from Spartan Marine. And they are designed to angle the stanchions inboard at 5 degrees. However, I've reversed them so the stanchions will angle outboard. And yet that still doesn't look enough, so I've constructed wedge-shaped bases to angle them probably around 8 degrees outboard. Overall, adding stanchions is pretty straightforward. Except, of course, when it comes to getting the nuts and the backing plates on on the inside of the boat, as almost invariably the bolts will lead to places that are awkward and very difficult to access on the inside. For the actual lifelines, I'm going to use quarter-inch Dyneema, terminated at each end with a modified Brummel splice. And I turn to Colago Marine's instructional video for the splice. So there's the knot that keeps it from slipping. And we have to wrestle our thimble back in. This one will go on pretty easily. There, it's snug. So after you're done tying the knot and inserting the eye, then you have to tuck the tail inside the braid and finally taper the tail by cutting away strands. Zero strands usually. And voila! And I'll secure the lifelines with lashings at each end which will also enable me to tension the lifelines. And finally I want to add cargo netting beneath the bowsprit. This acts as a big net which I can lower the jib down into and it prevents the jib from falling down between the whisker stays, between the bowsprit and the whisker stays and uh, potentially getting dragged under the boat. And once again, I turn to instructional videos on YouTube on how to create cargo netting. As this is something I had not done before. Well, it certainly looks a bit more secure forward. We'll see how it works out in practice. So another project is to replace the cross piece that goes over the stern there, which supports my so-called techno tower, which is just a piece of PVC tubing that holds my radio antenna and mushroom GPS receiver for the VHF radio. And on the other side of that piece of timber, I mount my scaling ore lock, but I want to extend it somewhat in order to mount a bracket for my small three and a half horse Tahatsu, which I use on the fatty knees dinghy. So if I can mount it off the stern, then Ruth Avery will have auxiliary power. <laughs> Wait, what? Ruth Avery with auxiliary power? That kind of seems like a pretty big move. So I decided to ask my girlfriend just to kind of get a sense for how it might be received. How dare you? Well, she seems good with it, so I'm going for it. So the general concept here 
is to mount a lifeline stanchion upside down. And the lifeline stanchion, as you can see, has a built-in side brace for to prevent side-to-side -side movement. But it's also going to need an additional fore and aft brace. This, of course, makes for some tricky angles as we're fitting this to a double ender. Now, the end of the fore and aft brace does have a swivel, which goes one way. It's not a universal swivel. So, but at least that gives us a little bit of wiggle room there. So I cut off two squares from the same timber I used for the cross piece and epoxied them together with the grains at 90 degrees, so I made primitive plywood. And then I cut off the block at approximately a 45 degree angle with a table saw. And, uh, and that's where the, uh, where the brace will attach to and will join up against. So I'll sand and paint the block. Use the same black bright side polyurethane so it will match the hull. But before proceeding any further, let's mount the scaling ore lock so that we retain our manual override. So once we have the block mounted and through bolted through the bulwark, now I'm just attaching the swivel which I'm using number 10 self-tapping screws. I don't think bolts will be necessary there since that is primarily a compression support. So anyway, next step is to attach a square of plywood to the lifeline stanchion, which I'll do using U-bolts. And then it is to this square of plywood that I'll bolt on the outboard motor bracket. So I get everything bolted nice and tight but then run into a problem. Uh, it's definitely not going to be not gonna be able to handle anything more than about a four horse. The problem is the wooden cross piece still has too much flex to it which, res which is resulting in quite a bit of wobble down at the, out, down at the outboard motor bracket. So my solution is to add a compression strut, which will just go against the hull there. And it's mounted onto the wooden piece of plywood using an angled lifeline stanchion holder. And for now I just have a little square cardboard there where it butts up against the hull. That's definitely much more stable. We'll put a piece of leather right there to help to keep it from slipping and also absorb shock and vibrations. Well, we're getting down to the end now, which is good because we're going on week number seven hauled out in the yard. This has been quite an involved haul out, but at least I'm painting the bottom, which is usually the last big task of a haul out. So it's the 17th of June, and it's the big day. First the little boat goes in the water, little baby Ruth, and I'll row her around to the travel lift slip or we will wait for her mother to show up. Before we go anywhere, let's get the anchor ready to drop, just in case. That'll clear.
Hey, yeah? Are these your fenders or? Uh, the black one is yours. Okay. I'm going to pull them in and see what you're doing. Good looking bug you got there. Oh, thank you. All right, now for the $99 question here. Oh, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, what, is he out one back and works back there? Yeah, that's right. Please remember, it is a <laughs> Yeah. Huh? What's that? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's getting some cooling water. All right. So that worked about as well as I could have hoped. However, I'm going to drop my anchor and wait for a fair wind to sail out of Broad Creek. Right now the wind is northerly, which is contrary. And I'm not sure that outboard would have enough power to get me out of the channel once I'm out in the more open waters. So with fresh bottom paint, I'm just going to go around and check my depths. I don't want to end up aground at low tide. So I'm encouraged that the mounted outboard is going to be of considerable utility in situations just like these where I have to work in and out of a narrow creek or maneuver in tight quarters uh, where it is just not possible to sail. Up till now I had used a scowling oar for these situations which gave me quite a workout. However, even a gentle breeze ahead of five or six knots was frequently enough to stop me dead trying to scowl, so it was somewhat limited. Obviously the outboard cannot live there, especially when I head offshore. In fact, the entire bracket is going to have to come off. But as it is, there's just three bolts holding that bracket on, so it should be an easy removal. We'll just have to see how that works out. And so the following day, by Aurora's rosy fingertips, the forecasted southerlies arrive, which is a fair wind for us. So I give her main and staysail, way anchor, and we are on our way. And as always, it feels good to be under sail again.